Hey guys, welcome to episode number 86 of the Game on Girlfriend podcast. Today, I get to bring you Shalisa McNeil Burgess. She is a CEO and inventor. She's like a solution-based magical thinker. Like she's one of these people, you guys, that we are so lucky to have around right now. <laughs> we need people who are creating solutions. And she is the founder of Freea, which is I love this because as you guys know, if you've been watching Sarah Uncut, um, I went through menopause super early and this woman has come up with a solution for feeling overheated, right? For feeling super hot. And that's why she's named her company Freya. Her bracelets help you stay cold. She has patented technology. She has raised money to do this. She has used her own money to do this. She is so committed. You're going to see that shine through her eyes. And for those of you who are thinking of starting a business or you're looking around the world going, how can I do this? Like, what does it look like to be an entrepreneur today? I think Shalise is going to blow your mind because she is got this contagious energy. She's a fighter. She's so funny. She's so easy to be with. And you can see the intelligence and the thought behind what she's creating and how she's looking to help and serve other women. Now, when I talk to her off camera about her idea and these beautiful bracelets that she's created to help keep us all cool, they are gorgeous, by the way. But she talked about it in a way that really moved me. She said, it was like a dream I had. It was this thought, this idea, and it wouldn't leave me alone. And I think that part is so important for any of you who've ever been innovative or you've had that thought or that moment where you're like, huh, I wonder if I should. I hope that as you listen today, you understand that absolutely you should. Shalisa is an example of what's possible when you follow that through. Does that mean it's easy? No, it's not easy. But what you'll find out from her in watching her is how she deals with her self-doubt. She's very honest about that because, hi, she's human. We're all human. We all struggle with self-doubt. You guys have seen me do it. I know you do it. And I love how much she shares what it's like to go through and what she does to help herself through it. Now, this is the Game on Girlfriend podcast. So, you know, we didn't just talk business. So that's very, very important to me. Of course, we talked about the patriarchy. We touched on points of race and what that feels like and what we've all been dealt and what do we do with that? And how do we want to respond to that? And I think, again, that Shalise is a great example of what's possible when we say, okay, this is the hand I was dealt. This is real. I also have an idea. Let's do this. And finally, at the very end, I want you to listen to what she says when I tell her I think she's going to blow up. I found that to be so insightful and so telling about how successful I believe she's about to be. Finally, I want to let you know that this woman had a 30 plus year career <laughs> in PR and in communications. And you can tell, you can tell by the way she talks about her own brand and by the way she talks about her products and by the way she talks about her journey. All right. And finally, this is the really cool part. She's got a book called Relentless coming out in 2021. And listen to this subtitle. It is because I have to get this right. It's Relentless. Sometimes the underdog has to win. Oh yeah. So without further ado, let's get to it. Jaleesa, welcome to the Game All Girlfriend podcast. I'm so happy you're here today. I'm happy you're here today for about 9 billion reasons. But first and foremost, I have loved getting to know you already, and I am in awe of your business and what you've created. And so before we jump into everything that's taken <laughs> for you to do, I want you to tell okay. us okay. what Freya is and how women can enjoy it and what's going on and why you created it. Can you do that? I know I'm totally putting you on the spot, right? But I just... Okay. Guys, All right. I can try because guys? of... All right, go. <laughs> <laughs> So if you've ever been hot and tired of being hot, you're going to understand the need for Fria. And what is Fria? Fria means cold in Spanish. It's the integration of passive nanothermal cooling technology. And people are like, what the holy heck is that? I'm like, evaporative cooling. But it's a new way. It's a new way of using nanotechnology to provide cooling relief. And the simplicity of it is all it is 
requires is a little bit of icy cold water. Uh, and I'm wearing a bracelet right now. So you see that pretty gorgeous. bracelet? You guys, look at that. It's gorgeous. So this oh pretty gosh. bracelet does double duty. All you have to do is put a little bit of cold water. You see the underside in that little box right there? That's yeah. technology. And you're like, what? That's not technology. You got to plug in technology. No, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rhymes are already blown. Already blown. Yes. Yeah. That's just amazing. A little, bit of, a little cold water, icy cold. The colder the better. Anything okay. that's colder than you on your cooling zone, which is the inside of your wrist or your neck. Um, anything that's colder than you pressed on it gives this uh, cooling effect and takes the edge off the heat. So it's just like when you're overheating and you're outside and you put a bottle of water on your wrist or your neck to help you cool down. Same concept, but I did it in a pretty bracelet so that nobody knows that you're helping to, you know, calm down your personal inferno. You wear a cute bracelet and nobody's going to be like, oh my God, they go to crazy hot chick over there. Steer clear, steer clear. <laughs> I love it. And I think we need to talk about, can we talk about when exactly women start getting so hot? Should we talk about that? Oh my God. That well, it, you know, it varies, but uh, so scientifically, um, they might start <laughs> as early as their early 40s, but there's some people who go into early menopause due to certain surgeries or things like that, certain medications, all of those things take place. The problem is hot flashes are really not limited to menopausal women. We're just the ones who, are, who just talk about the misery the most. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> Holy it's the only symptom that we associate with menopause. Isn't that crazy? Now, menopause has a whole bunch of symptoms, but the one that we just cry about like all day long, is like, oh my God, that heat. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I was like, first, we're going to take uh, the edge off the heat so we can get our mind back. And then we're going to address the overall problem that is midlife because menopause is a, a, a occurrence in midlife. But if you're a woman, it's happening. Um, however, I spoke to like hundreds of women and they go, what'd your mom tell you about men? Oh, nothing. Um, and she didn't go through it. And, yeah, and right. every time you talk about women she right now, even if we're, yeah, she, not only did she, she didn't go through it, but I'm not going to go through it either because my grandmother didn't go through it and her grandmother didn't go through it. And we just don't go through it. And I'm like, right. See, there is lies where that negative narrative is written into our DNA because mm. menopause is associated with aging and women mm. want to do anything but aging as opposed to thinking about the badge of honor it is or get this the freedom that it is do you know what freedom is after you no longer <laughs> have a period like that is the best day ever <laughs> i'm close i uh, know but i will say going back to the heat thing though because you know what i've noticed the aging thing as well i'm super young to yes. be where I am on this path. And look how beautiful young. you are, right? Oh, look at, look so at sweet. you. No, but do you think that you look oh. anything like the images that they put in the media for like menopausal women? You know do what? I, yes. Fair enough. You're absolutely right. And once again, we have media to thank for telling women what they're supposed to look like all the time, right? Thanks, guys. Exactly. Knock it off. Um, yeah, we're done with that. But yes, you're absolutely right. We don't look like that. But going back to the symptoms of it, um, I'm not a good pregnant person. I had two successful pregnancies. I was very lucky. I am not a good pregnant person. I have like prepartum depression. I hate being pregnant, right? Okay. And what I found I agree is through menopause. You, by the way, say again. I agree with you. I had two kids and I was traumatized from, from both of them. And I was like, I'm not doing this again. And I don't care who tells me that this is fun. This is right. Fun. I mean, I didn't mind giving birth crazy. I would rather give birth than be pregnant. It was just like, just awful for me. But what I found is that I'm having similar experiences now that my body's changing and it is absolutely changing. But I will tell you the heat thing, which is why I'm so excited about Freya. The heat thing is no joke. I mean, I finally went to my doctor and we adjusted a couple of things here and there, very minor, but I didn't sleep through the night. Oh my gosh. Shalisa, I think it, it was probably 18 months. I literally didn't sleep through the night. Adversity affects every other aspect of your life. Sleep deprivation is a huge challenge within the menopause, like, you know, time frame. And it varies for every woman. It could be one year, it could be three years, it could be 10 years, it could be forever. It just it really depends on you. And there's no cookie cutter way to define it. But that lack of sleep thing, man. So then they wonder why you so moody and why you so cranky? Why are they calling you bipolar? I'm right. tired. I'm sleep. I want 
to sleep, but I cannot. I mean, it literally is one of those things. I remember saying when the kids were like super in little babies, right? Like, it's like, I was like, this is why they use sleep deprivation as torture. Yep. This is why they do this because you yep. think you're losing your freaking mind. Like when you fall asleep at a stop sign, you're like, yes. this is not okay. I mean, <laughs> it is really a human need, but that for me, I'm just wondering for all the women who complain about being hot, right? But that for me, that was like a life altering Yes. thing to be going it was horrible it was absolutely horrible and since we adjusted a couple of things like that doesn't happen anymore but I gotta tell you something between me you and everybody listening right now I would much rather be wearing one of your bracelets <laughs> than be taking something every day you know what I mean I don't love that you don't I have I to sleep to. so and most people or at least for me um I just decided a long time ago I wanted to respect my body as it matures right because I didn't want to be one of those people who was like, I don't want to get older and my body's not going to change and I'm going to stay in the gym 24 hours because that's just not practical. Okay. And you know, also just, dangerous, it's dangerous, right? It's a great way. Yeah, to Cause your body's body, just right? going to do yeah. what it does anyway. It's like, you yeah. can say whatever you want to say and you can do whatever you want to do, but I have a mind of my own and you're going to actually listen to me. So if you're not sleeping, you're not going to be good. All of those are symptoms and we are ignoring symptoms. I didn't want to alter the biology of my body. So I didn't take um, hormone replacement therapy at all. I was mm -hmm. like, how can I address this yeah. and manage the misery? Like, okay, my body needs to go through this because it's doing something that it needs to do to take me to another level, right? That's right. But That's right. How do I manage the misery so that I am still me and still dynamic and still vibrant and still relevant and I'm not like a hindrance to other people and my husband don't hate me because he's like <laughs> she's like a crazy person I mean literally the first couple of years when I, I didn't even know what was going on and he was always so hot and I'd be like if you cross this pillow for I will kill you. I, oh my gosh, I, they're so hot though. They're so hot. So, I love my husband so much. Was emanating heat. Oh and my I'm god. Like, I'm like, did you <laughs> eat a fireball? Like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, get away, you're too hot. I felt so I was like so mean, but I couldn't like it's I know we say it's just the heat, but it is it is borderline unbearable as like when a flash hits, it is yeah. like <gasps> It can take your breath away. You can't start. You're suddenly sweating profusely and you're like, hi, especially for me, I'd be on stage. I'm like, well, there goes that shirt. Okay. Well, you know, it's like a real thing. So I'm so, this is one of the reasons, I mean, one, I'm so inspired by your, how inspirational you are, your initiative to get this thing done. But I got to tell you as a fellow woman, I'm just like, thank you so much. Like, thank you. Thank you. And this is, by the way, what it's going to take. And I know we have a lot that we want to get to about the patriarchy right. and about racism and all these other things that are we still can out talk there. about all of that. Yeah. Towing around everywhere. Right. But it's like, this is part of how we're going to break down these systems that have so right. damaged all of us. Right. And like in different ways and in different points in our lives, yes. but it's going to take us with each other arm in arm, hand in hand, brain to yeah. brain, making stuff like this happen so that we solve these problems because the patriarchy, the media, they'll ignore it, right? Because that's well, they, how they we marginalize them. women and, and minorities, right? Let's just ignore it. It's fine. Didn't happen. Well, they, me, so it's they not do real. it because yeah. it serves them. It, it, whatever serves them. Like if they can create a narrative and it serves them, then that's what gets promoted when, especially when you're in the position of power or if you're the position that you own the media, because now whatever message are put at, messages that are put out there, that's what becomes ingrained in the psyche of those who actually see and hear those messages over and over again. It's like imprinting. But I say this, Sarah, we are the ones who are going through it. Yes. Yes. And number two, who are they to tell us what's going on with our bodies anyway, or what to do with them or what not to do with them? Like, how about you figure out what you're doing over there in your neck of the woods and let me manage my own personal inferno myself. It's so true. It's so true. You're annoying me on top of the heat. <laughs> 
Yes, that is true. It is annoying, but it's also, I mean, I go, I go a little crazy here, Shalisa. I'm not going to lie. Like I go to the, it's violent, right? I mean, it is. It's like to say you suffer, your body doesn't matter as much as mine. We have to start talking about that in so many different ways, right? But at the heart of it, for me, we joke and we're like, that's so annoying. And oh my God, they're hot boxes and they don't understand. And we can take, we can take that tact, right? Cause it's more fun and it's easier. And I think we really do get the message out that way. And for me, there really is a very deep, very real, very honest conversation that needs to be had about why it's beneficial for women to suffer, right? While, while we're going through that, we can't be doing other things the way that we normally would, right? Like when, if unwanted pregnancies, take a pick, all the different things we've all talked about all these times, if we're going through that and we don't have support through that, we yes. can't be starting businesses, right? We no. can't be taking care of all of the things we want to take care of. We can't continue to go to school. We can't continue to make the amount of money we deserve to be making all those things, right? So it does serve right. a purpose to allow women to suffer and it's violent. I think it's something that we can, we can continue to talk about and really explore how deeply we can affect this conversation in different ways. We have a unique opportunity to do that. And more importantly, I'm always encouraging women. Do you realize the, 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 magnitude of your own personal power when you decide what you're going to do that works for you and it doesn't have to work for the mm. rest of the world what works for you and we don't have to follow the joneses like i don't even know them what works for you? <laughs> who are they yes who yeah. are these people that we always like well this is who, what they say i don't know who they are but mm. they need to stop talking and we need to stop listening because yes. this particular life stage is adversely affecting the quality of life of millions of women every single day. I've had so many conversations with women. One woman told me that, you know, she felt like her sex life was over now and she was younger than me. I'm like, I'm 55. And she was like, my sex life is over. And I'm like, why the deprivation, girl? What, what happened? <laughs> Nobody like, said that. Yeah. What, what made wow. that decision? Because, was it this life stage that made that decision for you? And she's like, well, mm. you know, I'm not... I'm not as attractive and all of these things that we do to, 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 to negative self-talk. Mm. She negative self-talked herself out of the potential of a satisfying relationship, but at least that orgasm girl. Like, yeah, well, know. no, you know, our bodies need those, right? That's actually like a biological fact. We need that to it happen. Is. It's an important and then part. When you don't get them because you just decide <laughs> to shut down that mm. part of your body. You're, you're adversely affecting the quality of your life. And it's not that your life is about sex, but your life is about vibrancy. Yes. And all things that bring you joy or all things that bring you meaning or purpose. And when you start saying, I'm here at this stage now and the world has decided I'm no longer viable. I'm no longer relevant. I'm no, all of these things. I'm like, who are you to let other people who don't know anything about what you have to offer and you're probably more badass now than you ever were because your confidence level is different when totally. you hit this, this stage of life and we pull ourselves back. So we shrink because of all of this noise that we're hearing. And I figure if we shut the noise down, listen to our bodies, we have a way to address this without making ourselves crazy, without making our partners and families crazy. And then that changes the dynamic of all the possibilities of what's available that you still can do. Like, you don't have any limitations, like mm. only the ones you put on yourself. And that's what, to me, is what changed. Like, I don't know, I turned 40 and stopped caring what other people thought. And I turned yeah. 50 and <laughs> right. I was like, whoa, you have an opinion that matters? Oh, God, no. So <laughs> That may matter to you, not to me. Yeah, that's really great. And I think that finding that power, I love what you're saying, Shalice, because I think you're hitting on something really important because... I know I can overwhelm people. That's something I do, right? Is like, cause the conversation's so big and I don't mean to do that, but it is kind of big, right? We got a lot of, we got a lot of stuff to clean up right now. And in looking at that, I love what you just said about how, when we take back our own power, each woman, when each woman does what's right for her, she probably, like we talk about this a lot, gives permission to other people to do the same, right? Anybody else watching that or observing that can do yeah. the same thing. No, and I think what- yeah. And I think what you're doing is an incredible example of that. Um, and I know you have a lot of amazing things coming up with Freya, some of which we cannot discuss yet, but I hope to have you back when we can discuss. Mm -hmm. That's all we'll say, people. But but inside of that, um, what happens for you? Like talking about the self-doubt, right? Talking about 
what it is to be in this phase of life, talking about what it is to be a black woman who's starting a business right now, like all these things that go on for you as a human being, as you're going through this experience, where do you still experience self-doubt and what do you do in the face of it? Because I think there's so many people listening who obviously deal with that. And I know every time, just like we said, every time we hear that someone else can get through it or how they get through it, it really helps the rest of us do it too. I'm a human being. So I deal with self-doubt every day, like every other woman. First of all, we look in the mirror and if something has dropped another inch, (laughs) self-doubt. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I know. It's so true. It's so true. So true. I was looking at my neck the other day going, are those, what in the world are the, you know, (laughs) so we are by nature our own worst critics. And it's not easy. So I'm not about to sit here and sugarcoat and tell anybody, but you know what? I just think positive thoughts and that changes everything because that's not true. I have people who really like, just like call me on it, which is great. And I think like, listen, like, you know, listen, Linda, listen, listen, get yourself together because the stuff that you're lamenting over are nowhere near as important as what you're bringing to the table. And Mm. sort of, I have to give myself, like if I have a negative self-talk one minute, I have to go right behind that negative self-talk and give myself a positive pep talk. And it's not like, you're great, you're wonderful, but it really is, Shalisa, Mm. what is your truth? What is true about who you are at your core? Mm. Nobody asked you to be perfect. So what I'm doing in my stage of life, especially now where I feel more, Um, confident and empowered to do so because now I don't feel like I need anybody else's permission right right my confidence and empowerment comes literally from going where have you come from look Mm. at the obstacles that you've overcome Mm. look at things that you thought you'd never do and you've done them so yes there might be a few more pounds that you're happy about. Well, get rid of them because that's something that you can do. You know what right. I'm saying? If yeah. you did it, it was something that you couldn't do. Whenever I get stuck in that mindset, I just start to think about where I've came from and what my possibilities are. And then what I'm creating that I really believe is going to be beneficial to like millions of people. Because if we, if we support each other as women, because you know, women are catty, but if you actually support each other as women, you're not helping just that woman. You're helping her daughter and you're helping her niece. Mm. You're helping her granddaughter. Mm -hmm. You're helping her great granddaughter because all of that gets written in our DNA as we move forward. Mm. We want to give birth to and to raise strong, powerful little girls, but not so powerful that they forget their femininity or not so powerful that they forget to be kind or not so powerful that they forget to be compassionate, but powerful in their own right to know I stand on who I am This is how I made, like, I I tell this to people all the time when we're having like the race conversation and they're talking about what black people think or what black people do. And I'm like, I want you to answer, ask yourself this question. Who among us, before we were knit together in the womb, decided, you know, I think I'm going to be born to that race that's oppressed. Yeah, I think that that's going to be my I think that I want to be discriminated against and I would like to be beat down by police on a daily basis. Yep, that's my choice. Oh, I think I'm gonna choose parents that you know are financially unable to really raise me in a robust way. So I'm gonna have a lack mindset. I think that's what I'm gonna choose. Yeah. <laughs> Who does that? Oh. Uh. Uh, any more than any privileged white person in the womb before they're knit together goes, you know what? I'm gonna get me some rich white parents. <laughs> I am going to live the life. I'm going to dance the light fantastic for my whole life. I am not going to do anything. I'm like, I'm going to be so used to privilege that I'm just going to be like, of course I can do whatever I want to do because I was born this way. So mm-hmm. we don't have a choice to whom we are born mm-hmm. to. What mm. our ethnicity is going to be, what experience are going to, they're, not, they're, they're predestined in such a way that we don't really know them. We didn't get to choose. So when we change that mindset about all of these things that we get all caught up in, in terms of like that thought process around being a black person, a white person, all of those things, mm-hmm. like we, it, it will, it will give you a different sense of compassion. And that's what, to me, we are raising our children to be, think about like, 
you may not have had a choice into who you were born to or what ethnicity you didn't have a choice into that but what you you do have a choice of what you do with your life afterwards and when women support women that's what we get to do raise little girls that understand that like yes. there's some things you didn't have a choice on but you get to choose once you get here you get to choose what you're going to do with the rest of your life and women supporting women mm. really can help that perpetuate it for generations to come so i know i went off on a tangent a bit but i wanted to bring it back <laughs> no i mean it's, listen i said what do you do with self-doubt and you brought it back to women supporting women because that's that again is how we <laughs> that's how we're going to lift up right we need each other i mean none of us can do this alone we, we can't, it's impossible, right? Even no. if you are a solopreneur and you want to make money, well, you can't make money without other people. Yes. Other people are the people right. who give you the money. Like you can't, you can't <laughs> do this alone. And I think as women, right? And the awareness we all have of what's happened. And like you said, we got born where we got born. And now it's like, what are we going to do with that knowledge? What are we going to do with the truth of those facts? Right. And what are we going to act in the face of today now? What can I affect? What can you affect? How can we support each other? Where do we go from here to make sure this stops? Because I think part of what you just said about what the, the lack of choice we had, where we got born, we got born where we got born, right? right? And I really remember that you reminded me of something I totally forgot about until you were talking. I remember being really young and hearing about, there was a big movement. Oh, forgive me. I believe it was Ethiopia, right? All of the mm -hmm. children were starving in Ethiopia. There was a huge uh, yeah. movement. And I remember sitting in an auditorium in second grade or whatever, where they were doing a fundraiser for this. And I was like, that could be me. Like <laughs> how, why, what? Like it just was a moment. I don't know. I don't think I ever shared that with anyone before, but those, right. those moments of flashes of like right. reality that we all get, like, wait a second. Right. What there by like, what, like, how did that happen? Like what, what dice did we roll to get this life? Right. Exactly. And so I love how you said that, like we're starting there. Right. Right. With whatever that is. For each one of us, it's different. And then what do we want to do in the face of it, knowing full well that the self-doubt's going to come in. But I also think I always, I've really found myself starting to ask this question a lot lately. Who benefits from us having such severe self-doubt? <laughs> Who benefits from women being catty to each other? Men. Who benefits when women don't support women? Men. That's right. And it's like, and I, I'm not a man hater. I love men. Right. But it's no. like the way the patriarchy has been set up. Right. Right. Who benefits when we're so preoccupied with our necks? Yes. Yes. It's a thing. Yes. It's a thing. It's a like, thing. Who benefits when we're so preoccupied with our necks that we're not creating the next product that could end exactly. up being a hundred million dollar business. Right. Step into your greatness because your self doubt says, I don't look the right way. That's right. You know, I don't sound the right way. I don't, I don't come from the right background. I don't have the right, you know, connections. If you say this to yourself, then the greatness that you were supposed to step into with both your feet can never manifest because you're so occupied with the, I don't have, I didn't, I'm, I'm not this, I'm not good enough. Cause it's really the overarching message is not good enough. Right. Um, and you get so preoccupied with that, that you don't step out into who you mm. are and what you're meant to do. And I think that we mm. can change that too. I think that women supporting women and really doing that, like not, to, not just talking about it, like, like really doing it. I love when uh, the next woman wins, like that yes. makes me, I can, it doesn't hurt me in any way, shape or form right. to share knowledge, information, resources. Mm. What does it, it doesn't take anything away from me. That's right. To, to give you something that might help you because there's more than enough for all of us to have more than enough. I don't need it all. If you get some too good, because then your kids thrive. And that's what that's I right. want for you. Like you want your kids to thrive, right? You're like, I want my kids to grow up. I want them to be safe. I want them to have opportunities. We all want that for our people. So why in the world would I need everything for myself? No, supporting women is a powerful, powerful act of unselfishness. Um, mm. Mm. You know, hate we do on them like she looks a certain way, but that woman might cry herself to sleep every day. You don't want to, you don't even know what she's going through behind right. with me, you know, and sometimes we create a facade that because it's our little represent, representative that we go, this is who can see, we get the world can see. And then behind the scenes, there's a whole different me. So I just decided I'm just going to let the world see the real me, you know. I love that because also too, by the way, that facade was dictated by the patriarchy too. 
of course, because right? you like, gotta have a certain well, look. Yeah, exactly. Like you're, oh, oh, or now we're gonna beat each other up because we don't wait, we don't look the way some guy decided we should look. And by the way, it was some guy who was probably selling cars or beer. And we're like, like, oh, I don't look like that. So I guess I'm not good enough. What in the actual hell are we doing? And so I, again, just wanna acknowledge what you're doing, right? Look, I got it. You made an awesome bracelet. You've got your patent. You're like kicking butt left, right, and center. And underneath all all of that amazing work that you're doing on a day-to-day basis, I want to let you know there's a whole, like, you know, they always talk about the iceberg, right? There's a whole iceberg underneath that water that you are moving and changing and giving other people permission to change too. And I just really hope you know that, that you get at, at a deep level that that's actually what's happening in addition to all of your outward success and you moving this company down the line. Well, I'm doing my best because honestly, so people, you know, because we live in a capitalist society, uh, people really get caught up in the what's going to make the money. But I said, you know what, sometimes people let the money make them. (laughs) When you actually come to like our platform for Freya is not just the bracelet. The bracelet is let's take the edge off this heat so you can get your mind back. But our platform is bigger because it really is about educating women on this stage of life, educating men on this stage of life, because there's so many transitions that are typically happening when we get to what's called midlife, right? It's like Mm. empty nesting. Some Mm. women don't handle that well. I was not one of those women, though. I was (laughs) glad. I was like, y'all leaving? Finally? Jesus, it you so long. Like, I'm going to start a business. Bye. <laughs> I, just, I was just like, how long y'all stay in? My mother was like, well, listen, your house is too comfortable. I'd stay at your house, too. You so always got food. People could come and go. And like, <laughs> you know, she's like, you could, you could, I, I would, I would stay, too. I wouldn't be in a rush to leave. But I just wanted to, to know that I wanted to create a platform where we give women a safe place to discuss this life stage, right? Because we're not having you know, like informed conversations. It's sort of like hush, hush conversations in like small circles because you're like, I don't want anybody to know that I'm a little hot, you know, a little bit clamped or something. (laughs) And you don't don't want to tell. Yes. You you don't want to tell anybody what you're going through because of the connotation associated. I'm like, we need to shift that away. So we also created a show we called The Pause, right? Create, and we we just talk about everything that has to do with midlife because if we can, A, make it safe to discuss it, Mm -hmm. then it also Mm -hmm. becomes safe to address it. Mm -hmm. And our goal is also to like leave folks with some tips at the end of each show, like maybe you can use these and create what's going to make things work for you. But at the end of the day, it's a safe conversation because it's it's a no judgment zone. And Mm -hmm. we're going through all of these things that we're going through and they're normal. Maybe we can save some marriages because, you know, uh, divorce happens significantly at this stage of life because a woman is changing. It's not that men don't go through what I call menopause. It's just not as... It's not as prevalent or, you know, mm-hmm. symptomatic the way ours is, because ours is actual biology things happening. And we can't help it. But I've noticed right. that there's so many relationships that, you know, tend to fracture now. And what should be joined together is going to fall apart. And so I felt like education is really what transforms everything that we do. And the more you know, the better you can deal with something. So I am super passionate about the platform. Just as I'm a passionate about the braces, but I'm really passionate about sharing the information, providing a resource and, you know, helping us to understand that it's okay. Uh, it's normal and we can get through this together. I love and, it. Yeah. Aging you is have, like a badge of honor. <laughs> yes, it is a badge. Well, it is right. I mean, oh it my is. gosh. Right. But, it's, but again, it goes back to like men are sexy when their hair is gray. Right. And we're like, all dying it every three days. Oh but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm so- truly, and my husband is all gray, like his whole head, but he was prematurely gray. So yeah, when he was in his 30s, he said he went all gray. And I'm like, oh, I bet that was still sexy on you. Uh, That's right. Yeah, the little grandma with my grays in my head. I don't think they're sexy at all. I'm like, no, 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 no. I know it's true. It's true. That that's a that's a game I'm still playing. I gotta say, catch catch up with the grace. But you have at your fingertips too, like while we're talking about how many women are going through this, I know you have at your fingertips the numbers. How many women go through menopause every year? Right this second, about yeah. 50 million people, women in the U.S. So just are, a couple. Yeah, just a few. Um, but it's the age range 
So when you say anywhere, if you it, women from 40 to 55, so about 50 million women are in that perimenopause, menopause age range. Now they may not all be experiencing symptoms, but about 75 to 80% of them will. Got it. At okay. some point okay. in this time span. And that's huge. But guess how many worldwide? Like 475 million. At in, like if we're talking like today, today about 475 million women are wow. in active active menopause like not on the other side of the hill no but like peri, or, peri or active menopause yeah wow and every year how many more women join that 50 million about users? two million women age into the age range every year oh i see okay got it holy cannoli that's a lot of human beings it's a whole heap of human beings and wow. Uh, it, could you imagine that 75, if I even go with the lower number, 75% of them are hot. <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> In more ways than one, my people. More ways than no, one. I do say yeah. it that way too, Sarah. I go, I'm hot, I'm hot, but I'm also okay. hot. So okay. hot. Yes. Yeah. And so. I'm just owning that word from here on out. That's about all I have to say about that. All right, Shalisa, I got to tell you, it has been such a joy to talk to you today. I love when we're able to have really honest conversations about all the different aspects of life that our businesses touch, what they do to us internally, the opportunity to overcome self-doubt and to have these sometimes tougher conversations about how we can really support each other and be honest about how we can do that better. And I'm so grateful you came to share with us. And I cannot wait to see what happens with Freya in the coming months, because I have a feeling you're about to blow up. You heard it here first, people. You heard it here I, first. From your <laughs> mouth to God's ears, I surely hope so. But I really hope it blows up more because if it blows up, that means that millions of women get helped. Or if it blows up, it means that we're changing the education model for this life stage. And that means my daughter is going to do better when it's her turn. And then her daughter is going to do better when it's her turn. So if it blows up, or when it blows up, because we've got to use right yeah, word. That's right. I yeah. want it to blow up, not just for me. I want it to blow up for all the women who are in this stage right now and who are wishing that they had a good best friend to talk about it and a safe place to do it and something to help beat that heat and still be cute because that's important. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I am oh. looking forward to it and really, really hopeful about it, um, you know, because yeah. we have uh, a few, a couple of bracelets that we have on the market right now. So, um, I mean, we'll get them and try them and then get feedback to us, you know, so we can continue to iterate, but more importantly, just like, I just want it to be a way that we connect because when mm. we connect, a powerful things happen when women get like, like I connected with you. And since the first day yes. I met you with your amazingly infectious energy, um, <laughs> it's, I'm like, I, I just was like, so grateful. So like, so shout out to Helen Arshan too. I don't know. How Hell to yeah. Her. <laughs> no, Helen. Yes, I love Helen. Helen. Uh, she uh, is awesome. Just, yeah. just also super supportive. And, and see, it was like effortless for her, but it was also like super, I'm like super appreciative that anybody was like, wow, what she's doing is worth us even talking about it. So absolutely. Yeah, and listen, you guys, I hope everybody listening or watching on YouTube, I hope you guys heard what she just said. I really want to acknowledge, I'm going to stick, like, just, we got to pause because that was amazing. And that's how I know you're going to be successful because when the mission is to change lives, the success always follows when the mission is success. Mm, not always. And the, it is sort of like, you know, as soon as like, day turns into night and I do like, like, like that cycle we go through when somebody leads with service, when somebody leads with the, the desire to change what's happening in humanity, right? no matter how that change comes about, that's when the success occurs because it isn't selfish because it is about making the world a better place. And I certainly believe that the universe is seeking for ways for us to be more life affirming like that. And you are one of the people on this planet doing that. And so I hope you heard it. I hope everybody listening heard it. If you're stuck in your business or you're not sure of your best next move, let Chalisa be a great example to you of where you can start to look to find out how to move next. And I hope you guys pick up a bracelet. We do have a coupon code for you guys below this video or in the show notes of the podcast. So make sure you pick up a bracelet. They are 
gorgeous. They're, oh my God. First of all, everybody's going to be like, where'd you get that? What is it? And then your beautiful secret will be to pass on an amazing conversation about what it is to be a woman today. Shalisa, I love it. It's gorgeous. Thank you so much for being with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for this time, this opportunity. You rock, Sarah. Like I needed a coach like you my whole life. <laughs> uh, well, you got me now, sister. <laughs> All right, you guys. Bye.